Yusei Fudo, Turbo Duelist, Signer, Inheritor of the NRD Legacy and Pioneer of a New Form of Synchro Summon. And as prolific as he is in the anime, he's arguably even more so in the real world. As the protagonist of the third Yu-Gi-Oh! series, Yusei was set to carry a whole new generation of the card game into the future, and he had a lot on his plate. Not only would they be the face of the first new extra deck summoning mechanic since Fusion, or the first since Ritual if we just look at generic summoning mechanics, they would also drive the narrative of a much more mature setting in the anime. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't a stranger to dark imagery and themes. The original, like original original, had some pretty dark games and gruesome consequences. Duel Monsters was littered with rituals and sacrifices, and while GX is largely known for being very happy-go-lucky, it does grapple with concepts like the old exploiting the young, madness, loss, and perhaps most of all, televangelism. But while these themes would drive the narrative for a time, they weren't quite as pervasive as they would be in 5Ds. Right from the get-go, we have a very stratified social hierarchy, a system made to enforce that hierarchy, police officers that are very eager to enforce that hierarchy, and an Illuminati-type organization that uses corporations as a front to advance their own aims. And all of this is before the time-traveling eco-fascists show up. And so, it's not hard to see why Yusei means so much to a lot of people. He's a character that lives in a world much closer to ours, plagued by similar systemic issues. He's clearly more standoffish than any protagonist we've had, with only Yusuku having the same personality trait three series later, but Yusei never gives up on his dream for a brighter tomorrow, fiercely valuing friendship and loyalty, while staunchly believing that every card, no matter what, has value, which is reflected in his deck of choice. While Stardust Dragon is his most well-known ace, I would say that's got a bit more to do with the signer influence than anything else, his true ace being Junk Warrior, headlining a number of other junk and scrap cards, not those ones, as well as cards with similar aesthetics, showing that Yusei finds the potential in all things to be great, even himself. But today, we aren't going to be focusing on Yusei's two most iconic archetypes. Today, we're going to start with the building blocks of Synchro Summoning themselves, the Synchrons, as well as their associated Wario- as well as their associated Wario Synchro Monsters, as well as their associated Warrior Synchro Monsters, and through them, the Warrior main deck monsters that Yusei is fond of using from time to time. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and we've got a long road ahead of us, so get ready to activate that speed world field spell, kick your dual runners into high gear, and let's rev it up! It's time for Yusei Explained Part 1, Synchrons and Warriors. Part P. The P stands for Prologue. So, point of order before we go any further, I'll be grouping Yusei's cards into four general categories, Junk, Synchron, Stardust, and Warrior, with a miscellaneous section to cover anything that doesn't fall into these categories. But the cards suffer from something I like to call World Legacy Syndrome. Several of them belong to multiple themes. Cards like Junk Warrior, Stardust Synchron, Junk Synchron, Stardust Warrior, all that good stuff. So do I have a concrete set of standards to group these cards in a logical order? Heck no! I just decided to add cards to categories based on what I feel is most appropriate. So if I get done with a section and miss a card that technically could belong there, make sure to stick around until the end of this series. Then you can hit me up with all the obscure cards I ended up missing. Would not be the first time. But despite all that preamble, I do feel like the following cards do need to be talked about together. A number of Warrior Synchro Monsters, not monsters with the Warrior typing but are Warrior in name, have specific tuner materials. This is kind of a holdover from Fusion, though I suppose the rest of the Synchros in the beginning sets were supposed to highlight how freeing it was to no longer need a specifically named monster. Now you just needed a specific subtype of monster. So, understandably, it's kind of hard to talk about one without the other. So to start things off, let's talk about one of Yusei's most iconic monsters, Junk Synchron, a level 3 Dark Warrior Tuner monster with 1300 attack and 500 defense. When normal summoned, you can target a level 2 or lower monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. This little buddy is actually a necessary tuner in a lot of synchros, but we'll cover those once we get to the Junk archetype. Junk here leverages the power 
of level 1s and 2s to not only make their signature synchro, but since they don't have any limits on what they can be used for, you can make all kinds of level 4 and 5 synchros. Cataster, Herald of the Arclight, TG Hyper Librarian, Junk Synchron is the pioneer of the one card synchro summon, and so many monsters can trace their designs back to this hardy little mechanic. And it's incredible that they made such a strong impression right out of the gate, striking a pull chord with the player base. And they're integral to making Junk Warrior, a level 5 Dark Warrior Synchro monster with 2300 attack and 1300 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. If Synchro summoned, Junk Warrior gains attack equal to the total attack of all level 2 or lower monsters you currently control. This makes it a static gain, so even if you remove those monsters afterwards, this fella still rocks the boost. Now, you'll want to go wide with small monsters before making Junk Warrior to maximize their effect, but if you're clean out of them when you make this Synchro, it's not too late. If you can chain a summon effect to Junk Warrior's effect, they'll hit the board just in time for Junk Warrior to benefit from their attack. Since the attack boost is a mandatory effect, it'll trigger even if it's the only monster on board. And since it checks on resolution, you have a very small window to work with, but it's a chance you can take nonetheless. And you better get it to them soon, because they look pretty hungry. In fact, they might scarf down all that attack at a moment's notice. And while we have him here, we might as well cover Junk Warrior's signature attack spell, Scrap Fist. It's a quick play spell that targets a Junk Warrior you control, and if it battles an opponent's monster this turn, the following effects are applied. Your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step, it deals piercing battle damage, it deals double battle damage, can't be destroyed by a battle, and the opposing monster is destroyed at the end of the damage step. Holy Toledo! For those of you who don't know, there are a lot of spells that are meant to be the monster's signature attacks in the anime. And while some of them can be a little out of hand, this one probably has the most going on, and I've covered Skydive Scorcher. Scrap Fist can be used offensively or defensively, either as a way to push for a lot of damage, especially if Junk Warrior is already souped up with a big attack boost that you can get that double damage with, but can also keep it from being run over while guaranteeing the aggressor gets smashed. And since it lasts for the whole turn, your opponent can't just pick a monster to sacrifice to that effect. They'll have to cool their jets and wait for another opportunity. But since you're probably playing a wacky synchro combo deck if you're playing Junk Warrior on the board, I've got a sneaking suspicion that you're gonna scrap fist bump them off before they can manage a comeback. Nitro Synchron is a level 2 fire machine tuner monster with 300 attack and 100 defense. And if sent to the grave for the synchro summon of a Nitro Synchro monster, you draw a card. So hey, that pays for itself right there. A good measure of any extra deck monster is how well it mitigates any minuses you incur for summoning them. Trishula, for example, is an inherent minus 2 because you're folding 3 monsters into 1, but makes up for that by stripping away a card from your opponent's hand and field, which evens things out quite nicely, and also banishes a card from their grave as a little bonus. So a tuner drawing you a card replaces that minus 1 all by itself, so the monster you make doesn't even have to worry about balancing the books. Now, the way this effect is worded, you might think that this Synchron is the focal point of a whole Nitro strategy and and it's not. So far, we've only got the one. But if there's a hole in the card pool that could potentially be filled by some kind of duelist pack down the line, you better believe someone in R&D has a whole Nitro archetype in their back pocket for just such an occasion. Mark my words. Nitro Warrior is a level 7 Fire Warrior Synchro Monster with 2800 attack and 1800 defense, requiring Nitro Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. Once, during each of your turns, if you activate a spell card, this card gains a thousand attack during the next attack this turn involving this card, during damage calculation only. And if this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation, you can target a face-up defense position monster your opponent controls and change that target to attack position. Then this card can make a second attack in a row on that monster. That's actually pretty dope, because if you squint a bit, this card starts to look a lot like Boral Sword Dragon. It's got a double attack, a massive attack boost. If this card wasn't bound to a specific tuner, I'd argue this would see a lot more play than it ended up getting. But it just goes to show that restrictions are kind of the death knell to a card's playability in this game. Because with that specific tuner requirement, this card's kinda... gas. 
Drill Synchron is a level 3 Earth Machine Tuner monster with 800 attack and 300 defense, and it grants your warrior monsters piercing battle damage. And once per turn, if one of your warriors does deal piercing battle damage using this effect, you can draw a card. We do love seeing the ability to push through damage to clean out a game, but an effect like this is kind of at odds with its status as a tuner. We don't need continuous effects that provide benefits from them, we need effects that get them onto the board quickly, cheaply, and if they can manage it, profitably. And that's all without getting into its stat line. You could probably find a niche where this card is usable, but you're gonna have to put one heck of a spin on it. Drill Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requiring Drill Synchron and one or more non-tuners as material. Once per turn, during your main phase 1, you can have this card's attack, and if you do, it can attack directly this turn. And once per turn, you can discard a card, and if you do, banish this card. And during your next standby phase, you special summon this card banished by this effect, then add a monster from your grave to your hand. Now this might not look it, but Drill Warrior actually saw a lot of competitive play. Being able to apply offensive pressure even if your opponent had a bigger monster was invaluable. And not only was the self-banishing effect a delayed monster reincarnation every turn, being off the field meant your opponent couldn't interact with it using normal spells or ignition monster effects. And of course, it doesn't hurt that Drill Warrior here takes inspiration from one of the most iconic Drill-themed mechas out there. I'm talking about Drill Man, baby, Drill Man. It ain't no Marl Wolf, but we take what we can get. Drill Man, baby, let's go! Turbo Synchron is a level 1 Wind Machine Tuner monster with 100 attack and 500 defense. And when this card declares an attack, you can change the attack target to defense position. And when you take battle damage from this attacking card, you can special summon a monster from your hand with attack less than or equal to the battle damage you took. This is an interesting way of summoning out monsters, not gonna lie. But by turning the monster you attack sideways, it might help your other monsters get over it. Not exactly a groundbreaking play, but it is something. Now we just have to find a way to break the news to him that Link monsters can't be turned to defense position in a way that doesn't leave them exhaust fuming. Turbo Warrior is a level 6 Wind Warrior Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 1500 defense, requiring Turbo Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. When this card declares an attack on a level 6 or higher Synchro Monster, that monster's attack is halved until the end of the damage step, and Turbo Warrior can't be targeted by the effects of level 6 or lower monsters. That means no Exiled Force, no Monarchs, and certainly no Sukuyomi. And chances were, if a Synchro was level 6 or higher, it'd have more attack than Turbo Warrior here, so the debuff was more than welcome. Not looking so tough now, are you, Goyo Guardian? And even if they weren't higher, then you'd still walk with the free extra damage. Of course, its synchro requirement, combined with the fact that the debuff only triggers when Turbo attacked, meant it didn't catch much spotlight. But at least they were able to find work on another automotive-based show, Power Rangers Turbo. Road Synchron is a level 4 light machine tuner monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense. However, when using it as synchro material for a summon that's not for Road Warrior, its level is reduced by 2. And if this card attacks at the end of the damage step, its level is increased by 1 until the end of the turn. So it's a decently sized monster that can modulate its level a bit with a little roughhousing letting it pair with a variety of monsters for a wide range of synchros, provided the battlefield was clear enough for Rode Synchron to attack safely. Now, you might wonder why they gave such a restriction to Rode's level when used outside of its signature synchro. After all, level 4 tuners nowadays are a dime a dozen. One of the best decks in the format right now makes them as tokens. But for its time, level 4 synchros were dangerous design territory. Some of the best synchros in the game were generic level 8s, and thus, making level 4 tuners meant that access to any easy to summon level 4 non-tuner would help you make those big monsters too easily. Usually, the tuners would be level 3 or lower, requiring some kind of combo line to get enough levels to make those monsters. So when level 4 tuners started cropping up, they had some very odd restrictions or very odd effects. Also, Yuga hadn't quite perfected the whole road concept yet, so there are still a few bugs to work out. Road Warrior is a level 8 Light Warrior Synchro Monster with 3000 attack and 1500 defense, requiring Road Synchron and two or more non-tuner monsters as material. And once per turn, you can special summon a level 2 or lower warrior or machine monster from your deck. So you've got to sink a little more into this monster, but now you're fielding all kinds of low-level utility monsters each turn right out of your deck. 
You could even summon a tuner and use them with Road Warrior to make even bigger synchros. But it's got a heck of a material requirement, and the level range on the summon effect is a bit too narrow for my liking. Road Warrior has a great design, but I'm gonna have to pass on Mad Max here. Jet Synchron is a level 1 fire machine tuner monster with 500 attack and 0 defense, and if sent to the grave as synchro material, you can add a junk monster from your deck to your hand. And if in the grave, you can send a card from your hand to the grave to special summon Jet Synchron, but it's banished when it leaves the field. This does mean you can't get the search if you sync with it after that point, but it's kind of a moot point anyways because you'll want to use it the turn it's summoned, and the two effects are mutually exclusive, not letting you use more than one effect per turn. But it's cool that you get the search no matter what you use it as synchro material for. So use this card however you wish. Is what I would say if this card wasn't banned. That's right, this sentient turbine was a cornerstone of a number of strategies meant to maximize the power of Crystron Halka Fibrax. That monster was hungry for any tuner that could revive itself or make replacement tokens, all in a bid to link climb as much as possible. And since Jet only needed you to pitch a single card in hand, you not only got to double dip on a tuner that just so happened to also have a great level, but enabled any grave synergies you had waiting in the wings. So with a little help, this card really was the little engine that could break the format. However, this does put our next card, Jet Warrior, in a bit of a pickle. They're a level 5 Fire Warrior Synchro monster with 2100 attack and 1200 defense, requiring Jet Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. If Synchro summoned, you can target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. And if this card is in your grave, you can tribute a level 2 or lower monster to special summon this card in defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. This makes Jet Warrior a really nice Synchro climbing tool, compulsing one of your opponent's cards while helping you to get to your Excel Synchro monsters the first time around, and can transmogrify one of your level 2 or lowers into Jet Warrior to help make more Excel Synchros in the future. But without Jet Synchron, you'll have to rely on tuners that can substitute Jet Synchron. And spoilers, one of them flat out will not work. So if you're looking for space in your Synchro spam deck, this card's definitely got a Jet. Satellite Synchron is a level 2 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 700 attack and 100 defense. If any number of monsters are special summoned from your grave, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if there's a Synchro monster with Warrior, Synchron, or Stardust in its original name on your field or in your grave, you can make this card's level 4 until the end of the turn. So this is like Road Synchron, but in the opposite direction. As long as you've got the setup, Satellite can help you access two different levels of Synchros and hits the board for free with any revival effect. So no matter what channel your deck is on, Satellite Synchron is here to help you tune in. Satellite Warrior is a level 10 Dark Warrior Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner Synchro Monsters as material. It doesn't need Satellite Synchron as the tuner, but they did come out in the same pack, and they do follow the same naming and visual conventions, so I'm just gonna fit it in here. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of Synchro Monsters in your grave and destroy them. And if you do, this card gains a thousand attack for each card destroyed. And if this Synchro Summon card is destroyed, you can special summon up to three level 8 or lower Warrior, Synchron, and or Stardust Synchro monsters with different names from your grave. Now, my initial conclusion was that Satellite Warrior was something of a novelty, but in the hands of the right deck, this card has become incredibly fierce. Despite the banning of numerous powerful tuners, Crystron Halka Fibrax has continued to be a mainstay in any competitive Synchro deck. So as long as you have a level 8 Synchro on board, of which there are several nowadays, it can turn into Formula Synchron for a quick Synchro on your opponent's turn, popping at least two cards and going up to 4,500 attack. And if Satellite Warrior gets destroyed, you'll know you have at least Formula Synchron to grab back. So all in all, the passage of time has given this card more tools to help it operate at peak efficiency. So not only can this card take a beating, it can also Satellite dish it out. Part 1, Synchrons. Okay, now we'll be focusing on the Synchrons in general, be they from Yusei's roster or otherwise. Bry Synchron is a level 4 Earth Machine Tuner Monster with 1500 attack and 1100 defense. And if this card is sent to the grave as Synchro Material until the end of the turn, the Synchro Monster that used this card as Synchro Material gains 600 attack, but its effects are negated. 
This is some classic level 4 tuner material right here. It has to have some kind of drawback, though in this case at least it trades utility for power. And if you only want the synchro you make for its floating effect, then you don't even have to worry about the negate. You can give Colossal Fighter a big upfront boost if you don't have the warriors to match. Coral Dragon won't get the pop, but it'll become a 3000 attack monster that draws you a card when it leaves the field. And non-effect monsters can benefit as well, turning Gaia Knight, the Force of Earth, into a 3200 attack beat stick for the turn. But since the extra deck is a huge source of most decks' utility, it's kind of a hard sell when adding it to your deck list. But here's a little trivia I learned while researching. Bryce Synchron is based on an 80s mecha anime called Galaxy Cyclone Bryger, which changes size using Synchron Energy. Gotta love those references. Synchron Carrier is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 0 attack and 1000 defense. During your main phase, you can normal summon a Synchron monster in addition to your normal summon or set. And if another Synchron monster is sent to the grave as Synchro material for the Synchro summon of any warrior or machine Synchro monster while you control this card, you can special summon a Synchron token, which is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 1000 attack and 0 defense. This makes for an excellent pair with Junk Synchron, since you can use that extra normal summon to set up another Synchro uh. summon. Wow. That's my summon champ. Since you can use that extra normal summon to set up another synchro summon, which will trigger the token summoning effect. And if you use them to make a level 5 synchro tuner monster, then you've got them, the level 2 carrier, and the level 2 token, which makes Trishula as well as any generic level 7 or 9 synchro you're after. Either way, this little assistant is here to help carry your plays. Changer Synchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and if this card is sent to the grave for a synchro summon, you select a monster your opponent controls and change its battle position. So if you're worried your opponent's gonna try and hide behind a defense position monster, or you want to set up some piercing battle damage with a monster like Stardust Assault Warrior, this is the tuner for you. Your opponent may not want to go along with your offensive plans, but I'm sure you'll manage to changer their minds. Cyber Synchron is a level 1 Dark Cybers Tuner monster with 100 attack and defense, and once per turn, you can target a level 4 or lower monster you control and increase its level by its original level until the end of the turn. And if any number of your monsters in the extra monster zone would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your grave instead. Now, this card was released during the first version of Master Rule 4, so there were some instances where you'd have synchros in your extra monster zone because you didn't have a link monster to give you extra zones, so the grave effect could give them a little extra protection. But thankfully, it just checks for monsters in the extra monster zone so it can protect links, synchros, exceeds, or anything else that ends up in there. And because it can target itself, not only can you double your non-tuner material to get you into bigger monsters, you can change Cyber Synchron to level 2 if you need some fine tuning, giving you that little extra bit of control. Synchron Explorer is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 0 attack and 700 defense. When normal summoned, you can target a Synchron monster in your grave and special summon that target, but its effects are negated. So it's like Junk Synchron, but only for... Uh, the Synchrons. In fact, since it's level 2, it's kind of the perfect complement to them. And while the summoned monster's effects are negated, you can still use them to make a Synchro if the levels match up, or an Xyz if you get a level 2 Synchron. Or just make a Link monster since it has absolutely zero restrictions on it. With all the options this gives you, there's a lot to explore. Hyper Synchron is a level 4 Light Machine Tuner monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and modifies the Synchro monster it's used for, much like Bry Synchron. When sent to the grave for the Synchro summon of a Dragon type monster, it gains 800 attack, but that face up monster is banished during the end phase. Now, that can be pretty annoying for any dragon you want to stick on the field to defend your board, like Borload Savage Dragon or Beals, but there are a few that can skip town for a bit to avoid the banished trigger. For instance, if you anticipate your opponent will want to destroy your cards, Stardust Dragon can keep you covered while giving you a little extra muscle. And since Chaos Ruler tends to be part of a longer combo, letting them stick around for a bit while leveraging 3800 attack is certainly an option. And of course, if you don't anticipate the game lasting until your end phase, then you don't have to worry about the downside at all, helping you to kick your win condition into hyperdrive. Monosynchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and when using this card as synchro material, the other material must be level 4 or lower warrior or machine type monsters, and they're all treated as level 1. 
so you're not going to be getting any high-level synchros with mono anytime soon. But it does help make Formula Synchron very easily, smoothing out the levels of your other monsters without having to hunt down level 1 non-tuners to stick in your deck, or give up the slots of non-tuners you're already running. Well, I mean, it does help make Formula, but really, now that Crystron Halka Fibrax exists, this card's basically obsolete, and get used to hearing that from time to time. Halk's a great piece of support for synchros in general, but it sidelines a lot of cards. This isn't the only one. Necrolinker is a piece of Synchron support that's a level 2 Dark Fiend monster with 600 attack and 0 defense. You can tribute this card to select a Synchron Tuner monster in your grave and special summon it, but it can't be used as Synchro material during the turn it's special summoned by this effect. But that doesn't keep it from being used for other kinds of summons, and if you summon a monster that can Synchro summon at quick effect speed, you can just wait out the restriction and use it to spring a Synchro on your opponent when they least expect it. But, um... Are we sure this isn't a Jack Atlas card? Fiend seems a bit out of place here. Performa Pal Odd Eyes Synchron is a level 2 Dark Spellcaster Pendulum Tuner monster with 200 attack and 600 defense with a scale of 6. As a Pendulum spell, once per turn, you can target a Performa Pal or Odd Eyes monster you control, and this turn, that face-up monster is treated as a tuner, also its level becomes 1, even if this card leaves the field. As a monster, if this card, special summoned from the extra deck, is used as synchro material, it's banished. When this card is normal summoned, you can target a level 3 or lower Performa Pal or Odd Eyes monster in your grave, special summon it, but its effects are negated. And once per turn, you can target a card in your pendulum zone and special summon it, but its effects are negated, if any. And if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon a synchro monster using only that monster and this card. And I thought the you say cards were a word soup of archetypes. Uh, but in general, this card is pretty good. As a spell, it makes your other cards tuners, and since they're likely pendulum monsters, you'll be getting a lot of mileage out of them. And being able to use your scales as synchro material is no small matter. Though at this point, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to rev it up or swing into action. Uh, or is it rev into action and swing it up? All these catchphrases are confusing me. Quick Draw Synchron is a level 5 Wind Machine Tuner monster with 700 attack and 1400 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by sending a monster from your hand to the grave. And they can substitute any one Synchron Tuner monster for a Synchro Summon, but can only be used as material for the summon of a monster that lists a Synchron Tuner as material. This is the main reason why Drill Warrior was able to break into the competitive space. Since Quick Draw doesn't need to take up your normal summon, it's easier to get onto the board than Drill Synchron, and if you pitch Dandelion, then that's Drill Warrior right there. And even way beyond that point, it made for the perfect tuner to summon Ultimaya Zulkin. Despite the restrictions on this card, it's surprisingly versatile, but make sure you do keep those restrictions in mind. You wouldn't want to jump the gun. Righty Driver is a level 1 machine tuner monster with 100 attack and 300 defense, and like Quick Draw Synchron, can substitute the Synchron tuner for a Synchro Summon. If normal summoned, you can special summon a Lefty Driver from your hand, deck, or grave. As for Lefty Driver, it's a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 300 attack and 100 defense, and if special summoned, you can make this card level 3 until the end of the turn. And during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave to add a Righty Driver from your deck to your hand. So in combination, normal summoning Righty can get you a level 3 or 4 Synchro, and next turn you can banish Lefty Driver to get 4 more levels worth of material, giving you access to a variety of your warrior synchro monsters if need be. Or, if you want to push the boundaries of synchro summoning, use the drivers to fast track you into Earth's Arctic Polari. Now that's what I call some serious hardware. Or should I say, hard bear? Rocket Synchron is a level 1 Dark Dragon Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a level 5 or higher Dark Dragon monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, negate its effects, and destroy it during the end phase. But you also can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Dark Monsters. Ah, uh, it looks like even Revolver is getting in on the Synchron train, huh? Ideally, you'll be reviving Absorouter Dragon with this effect, so when you Synchro summon a level 8 monster, you get a free Rocket Rocket search, but as long as you're looking to summon darks, the sky's the limit. And getting to the sky's pretty easy if you've got a rocket.
Stardust Synchron is a level 4 light machine tuner monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and while in your hand or grave, you can tribute a monster to special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Also, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Synchro monsters. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a spell or trap card from your deck to your hand that lists Stardust Dragon in its text. We'll get into the cards you can search with this next episode, but trust me, we've got some doozies. And since you contribute a monster to recur them, they make for a great long-term tuner. I know we've talked about a few level 4 tuners so far, but this one leaves the rest of them in the dust. Steam Synchron is a level 3 water machine tuner monster with 600 attack and 800 defense, and during your opponent's main phase as a quick effect, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon using this card you control. Ah, the much vaunted Quick Effect Synchro Summon, usually relegated to specific archetypes or Synchro tuners. But Steam here can be used with anything, so long as you don't wait until the battle phase to pull it off. Summon the right monster with this, and you'll be in a great position to Steam clean up your opponent's board. Unknown Synchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. But you can only special summon Unknown Synchron this way once per duel. So it's a tuner with Cyber Dragon summoning conditions. And while the once per duel restriction means you're not likely to run more than one, its type, level, and attribute are very advantageous. Not just for Synchro summoning, but for Link summoning as well. As for why why they were so stingy with this effect, well, it's unknown to me. Okay, now it's time for some extra deck Synchrons. Formula Synchron is a level 2 light machine Synchro Tuner monster with 200 attack and 1500 defense, requiring generic material. When Synchro summoned, you can draw a card, and once per turn, during your opponent's main phase, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro summon using this card you control. It works much like Steam Synchron, but lives in your extra deck so you can't brick on it, and draws you a card immediately on summon, so it makes up for the minus one you incur from making it. It's also a great target for Crystron Halka Fibrax to summon, since you get the draw anyway, because the summon is counted as a Synchro summon, and opens up the path to make Black Rose Dragon, Satellite Warrior and Baron de Fleur all on your opponent's turn. Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically a race to see who can get their win condition first, and with Formula Synchron, you'll be able to keep pace. Excel Synchron is a level 5 Dark Machine Synchro Tuner monster with 500 attack and 2100 defense, requiring generic material, and can only be Synchro summoned once per turn. Once per turn, you can send a Synchron monster from your deck to the grave, then either increase or decrease Excel Synchron's level by the level of the sent monster. And as a quick effect during your opponent's main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon using this card you control. So not only does this make Excel incredibly flexible when it comes to what Synchros you can go into, it can also bin any Synchron to set them up for later. For instance, you can send Stardust Synchron to the grave and tribute Excel to get the search. It has a huge range of options, which is what you want out of your Synchro enablers. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it excels in that field. Alright, now it's time for some Synchron spells. Ready, Set, Duel is a continuous spell that, when activated, if you control no other cards, adds a Synchron monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, during your standby phase, you place a signal counter on this card. And you can remove two signal counters from anywhere on your field, and send this face-up card to the grave to draw two cards, then send a card from your hand to the grave. This is one of the new cards that came out of the History Archive collection, and it's pretty rad. Not only does it grab you a Synchron if activated at the start of the game, and maybe even later, but it's also a big Turbo Duel reference. The signal counters act as speed counters, and the drawing effect is much like speed spell Angel Baton, a card that saw a lot of play in the anime. Its usage of signal counters also synergizes with a warrior synchro we'll be talking about in a bit. Suffice it to say, if you want a duel like you're tearing up the track, this is a great card to add to your deck. It also reminds us all of the time you say trounced officer trudge, and that always brings a smile to my face. Synchro Dilemma is a continuous spell that can activate one of two effects each turn. You can either send a Synchron monster from your hand or face-up field to the grave to special summon a monster from your hand, or target another card you control, 
destroy it, and if you do, special summon a Synchron monster from your grave with a different original name than the card you destroyed from your hand or grave. Now, I've already covered this card, as well as the cards featured in the art, Fleur Synchron and Necro Synchron, in my video covering all of the Fleur cards, and while I won't be going over those monsters in these videos again, I feel like this spell is tied enough to Synchrons in general to be included. It helps mobilize cards out of your hand, as well as giving you back some of your better Synchrons so you can use them again. If you'd like a more in-depth analysis, as well as the pun for this section, you can check out the video right here. Hope you enjoy! Synchronized Realm is a continuous spell that burns your opponent for 500 damage each time you Synchro Summon, and it's literally only here because it has Synchron in the name. Next, our last Synchron spell is probably the most iconic, Tuning. A normal spell that adds a Synchron Tuner monster from your deck to your hand, then sends the top card of your deck to the grave. I have no idea why they tack that on at the end, but at least you get the search first, so as long as you have a legal target, you won't accidentally whiff. And you might sometimes mill a relevant card off the top, so that's cool. Sadly, it can't search any of our non-tuners, so cards like Synchron Carrier and Synchron Explorer are out. But I won't harp on about it for too long. I'm sure they have a reason for not letting this happen noted down somewhere, so they can string us along with that information. Okay, okay, that was a bit much, but I will leave off this section by saying that this card is instrumental to your success. Part 2, Warrior. This section will cover the myriad warrior monsters used by Yusei, and even some not used by Yusei but fit the general vibe. For instance, Toon Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior normal tuner monster with 1600 attack and 200 defense. This warrior's antenna can attune to any energy wave. It can monitor transmissions from miles away, but also suffers from bad reception. Oh, poor thing. Strictly speaking, this came out in some starter decks, but it was also part of the intro to Synchros, and it's got Warrior in the name, so I'm counting it. And it's good that we have a decently leveled tuner that we can use Unexpected Die on. Just, uh, don't mix it up with any Toon monsters, because that's a whole different subtype. Backup Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior monster with 2100 attack and 0 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand while the only monsters you control are 2 defense position monsters. But you can't synchro summon the turn you special summon this card. This can also be circumvented by using quick synchro effects to do so on your opponent's turn, but you could also just... Uh, not synchro. As the game has progressed, monsters have become the key to a number of different extra deck strategies, even if they don't belong to a particular deck. Backup Soldier might stop you from Synchro Summoning, but 5 is a very advantageous level for Xyz Summoning, and more monsters on board means better Link Summons. They also look like if Ted Tonate and the TF2 Soldier got hit by Polymerization, and that's just neat. Big One Warrior is a level 1 light warrior monster with 100 attack and 600 defense. And during your main phase, you can send a level 1 monster, except this card, from your hand to the grave to special summon this card from your hand. So if you ever need a discard outlet for level 1 monsters, this fella's got you covered. Though, I've gotta say, I think there's a bit of hyperbole going on here. They don't seem like a big one warrior, they look more like a regular sized one warrior to me. I mean, look at its stat line. Boost Warrior is a level 1 Fire Warrior monster with 300 attack and 200 defense, and if you control a face-up tuner monster, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. And while on the field, all Warrior-type monsters you control gain 300 attack. So hey, a free level to go with your tuners, that can be pretty nice. Or you can have them stick around to pump up your Warriors. But to be honest, its stat line is way too small to be sticking around on the field, especially for such a small signal boost. Doppel Warrior is a level 2 Dark Warrior monster with 800 attack and defense, and when any number of monsters are special summoned from your grave, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is sent to the grave as synchro material, you can special summon two Doppel tokens, which are level 1 Dark Warrior monsters with 400 attack and defense. This is summoned like Satellite Synchron, but where that's a tuner that's a key component to synchro summons, Doppel Warrior is a non-tuner with a wealth of extension options, essentially refunding you the levels when used for a Synchro Summon. So you can pair them with another tuner, or if you Synchro Summoned a Synchro Tuner, you can use them to climb the ladder even higher. In fact, it was so prevalent that it paired with Junk Synchron's Revival effect to spawn a new series of deck lists that fell under the colloquial term Junk Doppel. This meant that you were just as likely to duel against someone with this deck as you were of playing it. But that just means you can have a nice Sonic Adventure 2 moment with your opponent, and that's pretty neat. 
Fortress Warrior is a level 2 Earth Warrior monster with 600 attack and 1200 defense. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card, and once per turn, this card can't be destroyed by battle. To use Junk Synchron effectively, you need level 2s that can carry you to the finish line. And while it's not going to benefit from any of these fine effects after being summoned this way, if you need a wall to help keep your opponent off your life points while you're setting up, Fortress Warrior can keep you covered on their initial summon and makes for a good revival target for Junk Synchron. But good luck trying to land a helicopter on that pad. This warrior may be hardy, but doesn't look like they have the steadiest grip. Gauntlet Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 400 attack and 1600 defense, and during either player's turn as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to grant each warrior type monster you currently control a 500 attack and defense boost until the end of the next damage step that monster attacks or is attacked. So you have a decently sized defender that you can cash in at any time for a boost to your whole warrior field. And with a little bit of damage step ruling knowledge, you can get the block and the boost all at the same time. See, at the point Gauntlet Warrior is flipped up in the damage step, it's not destroyed. That comes a little bit further ahead. Normally, you can't activate ignition quick effects during the damage step, except ones that alter attack and defense. So the second Gauntlet gets flipped up and your opponent's monster has 1700 or more attack, you can tribute Gauntlet Warrior to pump up the rest of your warrior board, and since you're already in damage step, they don't get a replay. Ah, uh, I love the power glove. It's so bad. Level Warrior is a level 3 light warrior monster with 300 attack and 600 defense. But don't let those level stars fool you. If there are no monsters on the field at all, you can normal summon Level Warrior as a level 2 monster. And if your opponent controls a monster while you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level 4 monster. The level modulation is pretty sweet, but I've gotta say, having to be so dependent on your opponent's board state, not to mention your own, makes this very situational. It's certainly no Ga 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 Magician. Also, are levels like a known quantity in whatever universe these monsters hail from, and not some abstract concept like in most games? Cause I got a level with you. that'd be pretty cool. Max Warrior is a level 4 Wind Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 800 defense, and if it attacks an opponent's monster, Max gains 400 attack during the damage step only. And if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle until the next standby phase, this card's level becomes 2, and its original attack and defense are halved. So you get an attacker that's bigger than Cyber Dragon, but if you kill anything with it, they get smaller than Sangan on your opponent's turn, both in terms of attack and level. Though the level change might be to your advantage, depending on the other material you have access to. Initially, I was kind of peeved that a card called Max Warrior peters out after only a single attack, but you know what? After you exert yourself for those extra attack points, you totally deserve a break, so you rest up, Max Warrior, even if that means you get horribly mangled by the opponent's crackback. Rescue Warrior is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1600 attack and 1700 defense. You take no battle damage in battles involving this card, and if this card is destroyed by battle, select a face-up monster your opponent controls that you own and take control of it. This is a weird card, but if your opponent has stolen your monster via illicit, non-continuous effect means, this card is a surefire way to get them back. Heck, you can even have them crash into a kaiju if you're worried your opponent's going to be able to capitalize on it. Besides, it looks like this public servant has plenty of E-Tanks, so I'm... sure they'll be fine running headfirst into a giant monster. Totally fine. Rockstone Warrior is a level 4 Earth Rock monster with 1800 attack and 1600 defense. You take no battle damage from battles involving this card, and when this attacking card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, special summon two Rockstone tokens, which are level 1 Earth Rock monsters with zero attack and defense that can't be tributed for a tribute summon. So this turns four of your levels into... two? It doesn't sound very good on the surface, but some of the most powerful early synchro monsters required multiple non-tuner monsters, so having the level spread out across multiple monsters can help. And in a more modern context, that's just more monsters for Link summoning. But since it only gets you the tokens when you specifically attack with Rockstone Warrior into a monster, it's not exactly going to help you build up a defensive wall. But not taking any battle damage from their battles is pretty neat, and they make it so your next synchro summon is just a stone's throw away. Salvage Warrior is a level 5 Water Warrior monster with 1900 attack and 1600 defense, and when Tribute summoned, you can special summon a Tuner monster from your hand or grave. Which is... 
actually kind of cool. If you special summon a tuner, you contribute it for salvage, which can then bring back that tuner, assembling everything you need for a synchro summon. It's an incredibly cool design that helps you access higher levels of synchro monsters, but don't think I don't recognize that helmet, Buster. You're clearly drawing inspiration from the classic Mega Man Legends robot, Balkan Garrett, and I like your style. Shield Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 800 attack and 1600 defense. And during damage calculation on either player's turn as a quick effect, you can banish this card from your grave, and monsters you control can't be destroyed by that battle. So much like Gauntlet Warrior, Shield Warrior can keep your team safe after taking a beating. But in this case, Shield does actually have to be destroyed. I remember this being a wonderful little tech pick that I'd run in Gladiator Beasts to ensure they survived combat so they could get their effects. But I fear that if I talk too much about him here, I'll be adding a bit too much GX flavor to the 5D's formula we're baking up here. Turret Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 2000 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by tributing a warrior monster, and if you do, Turret Warrior gains attack equal to the tributed monster's attack. Now, several of our warriors have shown up because they can help facilitate synchro summons, and while summoning a level 5 monster can help with this, I'm positive that Turret Warrior is much more ready to throw down than to get synced up. It essentially adds 1200 attack to a warrior you already control, and if it's decently sized, Turret Warrior can swing in with the best of them. And none of it starts a chain, so if you normal summon an 1800 attack warrior, you can follow up with Turret Warrior and beat up most threats in the game. They truly are a high caliber of monster. Now we're going to focus on another one of Yusei's iconic monsters that ended up inspiring a few more like it. Speed Warrior is a level 2 Wind Warrior monster with 900 attack and 400 defense. And once per battle phase, if this card was normal summon this turn except during the damage step, you can make its attack become double its original attack until the end of the battle phase. I suppose they felt strapping 1800 attack to a level 2 body was a bit much, so the compromise was to only make it 1800 for a turn before it ran out of gas. But now you had a monster that could dish out a little bit of offensive pressure, and when it was inevitably destroyed, Junk Synchron could come along and revive it, using them as the non-tuner material to really speed things up. And they wanted you to play this monster really badly, because they even gave Speed Warrior specific support. Limiter Overload is a normal trap that doesn't actually have an effect that you can activate, but if sent to the grave, you special summon a speed warrior from your hand, deck, or grave. And there's no caveats to this. You can discard it, mill it, send it to the grave with foolish burial goods, summon it to the field with magical hats, then trigger that effect when magical hats no longer applies. It's actually kinda nutty. But see, this is why you remove limiters before they get this bad. Maintenance is super important. And from this point, we'd see a number of Wind Warriors with a similar aesthetic that all had names referring to speed in one way or another. For instance, Dash Warrior is a level 3 Wind Warrior monster with 600 attack and 1200 defense. And if this card attacks, it gains 1200 attack during the damage step only. This is largely a strictly improved version of Speed Warrior. While it passively has 300 less attack, those differences at that low of an attack rung are negligible but it always attacks as an 1800 point monster, not just the turn it's summoned. The only thing Speed Warrior really has over Dash Warrior is its lower level, so it's summonable by Junk Synchron and can have their attack absorbed by Junk Warrior. So as you can see, there are some Dash pros and Dash cons. Rapid Warrior is a level 4 Wind Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 200 defense, and during your main phase 1 you can activate this card's effect that lets it attack directly, but other monsters cannot attack during the turn you activate this effect, which effectively makes it a main deck Drill Warrior without the banished shenanigans. Probably not the best at the beginning of the game, but when things are down to the wire, you can count on this card to bring the duel to a rapid end. Rush Warrior is a level 2 Wind Warrior monster with 300 attack and 1200 defense, and during damage calculation on either player's turn, if a Warrior Synchro monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can send this card from your hand to the grave to double your battling monster's current attack during that damage calculation only. And you can banish this card from your grave to target a Synchro monster in your grave and add it to your hand. So it's not always going to be in your grave for Junk Synchron to scoop it up, rather it can scoop up Junk Synchron so you can use its effect on other monsters. And being something of a Bujingi crane is pretty wild. I mean, imagine dropping this on a juiced up satellite warrior. Now that's rush dueling. 
Our last main deck monster is Sonic Warrior, a level 2 wind warrior monster with 1000 attack and 0 defense, and if sent to the grave, all level 2 or lower monsters you currently control gain 500 attack. So if you're looking to put Junk Warrior over the top, this is how you do it. Revive this with Junk Synchron, then use it and Sonic to make Junk Warrior. And for every level 2 or lower monster you control, you're adding an additional 500 attack to your big warrior, letting you take out your opponent with a Sonic Boom! Okay, now it's time for our Synchro Warriors. Catapult Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 1000 attack and 1500 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, you contribute a Junk Monster to inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of the attributed monster. So it's a very specific Catapult Turtle, gotta love those callbacks, but in this case you get the full value of the damage, while correcting for the fact that Catapult Turtle was, given the right setup, an FTK. So it's been given the Dark Strike Fighter treatment, making it so you can only use the effect once per turn. But the Junk Synchro lineup offers a lot of high attack monsters that you can trade away to close out the game, launching you towards victory. Gravity Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro monster with 2100 attack and 1000 defense, requiring generic material. When Synchro Summoned, it gains 300 attack for each face-up monster your opponent controls. And once per turn, during your opponent's battle phase, you can target a defense position monster your opponent controls, change it to face-up attack position, also it must attack this turn if able. It's not obligated to hit Gravity Warrior specifically, nor is it obligated to attack first, so your opponent can bowl over Gravity Warrior with another monster if they have the mind to. But even if your opponent only controls two monsters, Gravity swells up to a nifty 2700, so they better have a big bruiser to take him out. But since savvy opponents will just wait until main phase 2 to summon anything in defense position, I'm still not convinced it has a place in most extra decks. But this is what happens when you get sloppy effect text that doesn't cover these kinds of contingencies. But maybe this warrior would have shaped up if they understood the gravity of the situation. Lightning Warrior is a level 7 Light Warrior Synchro Monster with 2400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring generic material. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card in their hand. Funny way to jab at your opponent if they don't want to commit their cards to the field for fear of removal, or for just drawing a bunch of cards, though it doesn't really scale up particularly well. But it does mean that if your opponent is hiding behind a defense position monster, you have a way to do some damage through it. But don't be shocked if you never see this card ever again. Mighty Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2200 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the destroyed monster's original attack. Wait a sec. Burn, based on the attack of the monster it destroys, has one big arm and a regular arm, is a level 6 warrior. Hey, wait a sec, this card just copied off Flame Wingman! Am I saying it's a ripoff? Not exactly. I mean, they're from the same game after all, so it could be a case of carrying over familiar motifs, but you have to admit, they look mighty similar. Scarred Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2100 attack and 1000 defense. While on the field, your opponent can't target warrior type monsters you control for attacks, except this one. And once per turn, if this card would be destroyed by a battle, it's not. So Scarred can draw attention away from your other warrior type monsters while being a really tough cookie to crumble themselves. And thankfully, they're worded in such a way that should you field two of them, causes an attack lockout as long as they're on board. So the lesson is, don't mess with this monster. They lost a hand and their next course of action was to strap a sword to it. Groovy. Seven Swords Warrior is a level 7 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2300 attack and 1800 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, when an equipped card is equipped to this card, inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent. I love adding Ukazi to Noble Arms Gallatin. And once per turn, you can target an equipped card equipped to this card and send it to the grave. And when an equipped card equipped to this card is sent to the grave, except during the damage step, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy that target. That's actually pretty sweet. If this were fire attribute, I could easily see this as a backup card that you would equip Noble Arms or the equipping Infer Noble Knights to it as a way to push for game and remove cards. As it stands now, it's just kinda cool. If you like equip spells the way I do and want to build a very funny deck, you should definitely consider adding this card as your ace. And you know, good luck to your opponent if they try to get through this monster. They're behind seven swords. Now, 
I've saved probably the most 5Ds card ever for our last card this episode. Presenting Signal Warrior, a level 7 light warrior synchro monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you place a signal counter on each face-up card in the field zones, as well as Signal Warrior. This card with signal counters can't be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effects, and once per turn, you can remove 4, 7, or 10 signal counters from anywhere on the field to apply one of the following effects, depending on the number removed. For 4, you burn your opponent for 800 damage, for 7, you draw a card, and for 10, you destroy a card on the field, no targeting required. Yes, this is Yusei's Dual Runner, the Yusei Go, love that name. Yes, that is Yusei's helmet being used for the head, and yes, the signal counter effect does mimic Speed World 2, being almost a carbon copy of its text. And this would be expanded on once Ready, Set, Duel was released, giving you another way to generate signal counters, though on that card it only triggers during your standby phase, unlike Signal Warrior which triggers during both player standby phases. I also like how it puts the signal counters on field spells because, you know, the Speed World field spell. So with Signal Warrior, two face-up field spells, and a single ready set duel active, you can generate seven signal counters across your turn and your opponents, with even more being made if you can summon more Signal Warriors. This is certainly a much more for fun card, there's a lot of removal that can get past destruction protection, not to mention you need to be running something that guarantees your opponent has a field spell to make the most of their effect, but you can't deny how freaking cool it is to have a monster that's one of the coolest pieces of tech in probably the entire run of Yu-Gi-Oh, no matter what series we're talking about. Here's hoping we get a Signal Synchron in the near future, because I'll be sold on that right from the word go. And that's all the Warrior and Synchron monsters I'll be covering this episode. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode, where we'll be covering Junks, Scrap Irons, some miscellaneous cards that don't fit into any of the established categories, and of course the brilliant and phantasmal Stardust cards. As always, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without your support, as well as the support of my lovely patrons, so I'd like to take a moment to thank this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Adam Zagdell, Nebula Navigators Benjamin Meisner, Cody Griffin, Eric, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, John Manji, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Serb, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And while you're waiting for the next episode, check out the videos I made for my 10,000 subscriber special, Utopia and Onomat Explained. And if you want to see two Yu-Gi-Tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenkins' latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.